Hey, deserving listeners, it's time to continue our journey with Colt and Larissa on 90 Day Fiance. My name is Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a therapist and a professor. And as I sometimes remind everyone, never use YouTube or this channel as a replacement for therapy. If you need a therapist, get one. You deserve it. Let's get to the show. And had some reservations about Larissa, but I didn't think it would come down to actually yelling. I think Larissa might think I'm passive or I don't care or weak or something. Everyone was going crazy, so I figured one more crazy person probably wouldn't be the best solution. So that's not a irrational thing to say. I mean, on one hand, if you would have contributed or tried to calm people down, it might have made things worse. We've certainly seen that on this show before. On the other hand, not doing anything is maybe not the best course of action. He could have at least told his friend, hey, 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 friend, thank you so much for trying to defend me, but I think you're going a little too far. I appreciate it. I love you like a brother, but, you know, let's pump the brakes because I don't, I don't think this is going to work right now. Sorry, you left. Did you see what your mother did? She poisoned Dan. I told you that she would do it. Basically... Everyone in the cold films against me. I was hoping that we were going to be close off join Leah, but it's not going to be happen. Okay, so Larissa, her contention is that Debbie poisoned the other people, meaning brainwashed them or somehow, or influenced them against her. Um, we didn't see evidence of that, but maybe there's evidence of that. First off, regardless if my mother poisoned their minds with bull or whatever, it doesn't matter. You come off as very rude. I knew you, that you're Hold on, it doesn't matter. I don't tra- I, I, say about I, I, a lot look, of f- about me and it. I'm rude. Hold okay? on a second. I don't care what they did. I don't care what what they think from Debbie. You give them no reason not to think that you you're a bitch or rude. You can- Yikes! <laughs> uh, from my viewpoint, it looked like it was both Larissa and John's fault. They both escalated, particularly John, honestly. Now, maybe John is right, but I don't think his attitude, aggression, name-calling was called for. And now uh, Colt is saying, well, they had reasons to call you a B-word, that kind of thing. And that's interesting. I don't think that's going to go over very well. And also, I don't think it's very fair. I think from I'm just trying to think what I would have done if if I remained differentiated in the situation, which I can't guarantee, of course. But I'm guessing what I would say is, "Honey, I'm so sorry that happened. I had no idea that John was going to do that. I'm I didn't know what to do. I should have said something in the moment, but I I'm really sorry that that happened. That shouldn't have happened. And then repair, build trust, build goodwill. Then. If you have a bone to pick about Larissa's attitude or the way she treats John, then you can address that after you establish that relationship back again. But him basically saying, look, you deserved it is interesting. And I think it points to an hypothesis that I had about Colt in that both Debbie is sucked into their relationship and fights Colt's wars for Colt. John was sucked in and fights Colt's war, you know, for Colt, meaning that Debbie and John both express anger and feelings and opposition towards Luddy Luddy so that Colt doesn't feel like he can express. And so it sounds like while they were both berating her, particularly John, that Colt was actually secretly or uh, overtly agreeing with what John was saying to her, which doesn't bode well for Colt's ability to sift through his feelings, communicate about them, owning his own feelings, not being accusatory, that sort of thing. I can't imagine that this going well. I mean, essentially what Colt is saying is you deserved it. And Ladisa is now in a position where her only way out of this in a good way is to say, oh, Colt, you're right. John yelled at me. I deserve the whole thing. I'm so sorry that I made all the mistakes that I made. I I can't imagine that she's going to do that. Should be very nice. Oh, hey, how are you doing? Very open, but you choose not to because you think they're already, their mind is already made up. But people you think that sick. I will be nice with people that your mother say a lot of Care, about me? But stop. No matter what I do, they will but hate stop. me. Stop. Doesn't matter. You, you're not giving them a reason not to hate you, darling. Stop. 
So I think Colt's point might be rational if he emphasized sufficiently prior to this point that the way John was talking to her and calling her names and being very aggressive with her wasn't fair and was, you know, crossing a line. Then he could address, and by the way, you come across as kind of attitude-y with people that makes it harder for them to open up to you. You know, that's, that's a potentially a valid point, but if that's all that he's going to say after that humongous fight, then I can't imagine Larissa is going to hear it. Meal with someone, ask him how their day is. No alone in my wedding. I'm sorry. I just wish that Colt could be a man and stand up by my side. I don't feel that Colt supported me and wants to protect me. Yeah, totally agree with that. I think that that's a perfectly rational take and desire to have from Colt, which is, I think you're not on my side and I don't think you care about the way I was being talked to. Okay, maybe part of it was my fault, but to just completely blame me and not be nice to me at all after that really hor horrible interaction is, you know, proves to me that maybe you don't really care about me. And this has been my hypothesis for a little bit now, which is that I guess the question I have is, is there any affection and warmth and actual love between these two people? Because we certainly haven't seen it. Say that I want your money. If I want your money, I will marry a sugar daddy if I want money. He doesn't fully understand the situation. He has these thoughts, you know, like, oh, Brazilian hot girl, money, green card. It's our responsibility to show them that's not true. But you want that I'm faking my emotion, pretend my emotion to make them feel comfortable. Just... I think that someone made the, he the heads change against me, but I don't care. Nobody that is against me is all to my wedding. It's done. So she's really focused on the wedding ceremony, which is interesting because, all right, so John doesn't come to the wedding ceremony. All right, you know, it's fine. But what about the bigger picture? Because Colt's going to be friends with John for his, the rest of his life and all like that. So what about all the other interactions that are going to happen? I wonder if she's assuming that she's just never going to have to deal with him again. I don't know. Okay. All right, well... Debbie, now you will know that you say a lot of against me, okay? But I don't care. Because you... I don't... You, what? You, she's blaming me for John? I... Yeah. So she's saying, I didn't even talk to John. I don't know what you're talking... Now, maybe Debbie's lying, but that seems like a credible take. Of course, we're not there. The camera's only showing us so much. But for Larissa, she is very much fixated is a strong word, but I'm going to use it on Debbie, that John yelling at Larissa, the only reason why someone else would yell at her is because it must be Debbie, the evil mother-in-law, it must be her fault. And now Debbie's like, wait, what? It, it's my fault? I actually tried to alleviate the situation. I tried to distract the two of you while you were fighting. How, how is this my fault? It's, yeah, it's interesting. I, I don't even talk to John. You'll never say nothing against me. Don't blame me for John. L listen. You blame me enough for enough stuff. Don't blame me for John. You both think the worst of each other. You both think you're you're you are the worst people. It's not true. None of it. You just go from zero to bitch in like 0.3 seconds. What else did you wrong? So I wish he wouldn't use that word, but maybe it doesn't bother Letty says as much as it bothers me. But but now we're potentially in a functional triangulation situation where he's trying to help them resolve their conflict. I wish he would get them to turn to each other and actually make up somehow. I don't think that's going to happen, but at the very least, they're in the same room and they have the opportunity to directly repair a relationship. But I don't think either one of them, particularly Larissa, wants a, a relationship with the, with the other woman in Colt's life. Calm down. What do you think you're doing now? You're yelling at everyone. You're mad. What are you doing wrong? Look at the mirror. Listen. Debbie, please, De we're not in the same place. Debbie, to Don't slam the doors. Debbie, come here. She just go there to slam the door. She didn't slam the door. Yeah, she say, oh, you put it there. Well, you can do it, please. Don't slam it. It's really, really... Uh... Larissa, calm Yikes. <laughs> she, 
<laughs> she slammed the, I mean, maybe she did. Let's, let's listen back to that. Bitch in like 0.3 seconds. What else did you wrong? Calm down. What do you think you're doing now? You're yelling at everyone. You're mad. What are you doing wrong? Look at the mirror. Listen. Debbie, please, when I'm in the same place, Debbie, you, don't slam the doors. Debbie, come here. She just go there to slam the door. She didn't slam the door. Yeah, she say, oh, you oh, put it there. Mm -hmm. oh, you can do it, please. Don't slam the figure. It's really, really... Uh... Larissa, calm. Oh, wow. <laughs> So she must believe she's right because she wouldn't be doing this otherwise, especially in front of cameras. So this is interesting. When people have certain conditions related to early traumas, due to early relational traumas, we can develop certain ways of looking at the world that are very different than the average way of looking at the world. And it's usually based on the pains that we've been through. For example, uh, for Larissa, total speculation, she might have been in a household where someone was always basically against her. From the age of one, two, three, four years old, maybe her mom, maybe her sister, you know, maybe someone in competition with her and another loved one, who knows. But when she was very young, two, three, as her brain is developing, she found through experience that this person was always trying to get her, always bullying her. And Larissa learned, this is total speculation because I've seen this before and this is one of the things that I would find to be a accurate conceptualization that me and the client can both agree upon which is they learn through experience, that person is nefarious. That person is out to get me. That person, I've learned over time that they have secret, evil, hostile thoughts about me. And I didn't want to think that at first, but I'm learning that over the years. And that is locking into my brain. And now I'm going to be hyper vigilant about anything that looks like hostility towards that person because, because when in doubt, it usually is hostile. When maybe let's say it was an older sister, just for the sake of argument, and the older sister would slam doors occasionally. And at first, young Larissa, two, three, four years old, is like, oh, my older sister just slammed the door. But then over time, she learns, oh, when I hear a slamming of a door or a, a little bit of a force on a door, that must mean that my older sister is hostile and angry, and my older sister is going to get me later. My older sister is either going to throw me under the bus with my parents, she's going to be violent with me or some other kind of abuse, she's going to steal stuff from me, she's going to turn people against me. I wonder if that's the trauma as well. My older sister is going to turn my parents against me. You know, I'm making a lot of assumptions here. But imagine you had that experience. Well, your brain is developing during that time, and the way you see the world is now kind of locked in. Of course, the brain is plastic for the most part, but it, as we age, it's harder to capitalize on that plasticity. And so you see the world through that lens of like, once I have identified that person who is that threat, all those defenses and ways of seeing the world kick in. It's sort of like, uh, as a therapist, I'll just use myself, when I watch this show, all I can see is the potential that therapy could help these people, right? Why is that? Well, it's because I've had 25 years of repeated thought processes, seeing people in my office, actually helping them. Imagine eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, 52 weeks a year, several years out of my life, just doing that over and over and over again. Well, my neurons start to orient because what fires together uh, wires together that eventually for me, as I see people fighting, I instantly, without even trying, automatically my brain goes towards what, how can I help these people as a family therapist, as a couple and family therapist? Well, for some people, when you grow up and there's that hostile element that is always out to get you, you learn, I better be wary and I better assume host hostile intent is coming because it usually is. And if I assume it, then I can protect myself against it. And then you graduate and move on in life and meaning graduate from your family of origin and you start bumping up against other people. And even though those other people aren't actually out to get you, and aren't actually uh, have the hostile intent that you think that they do, you'll see it because your brain is oriented that way. You see it because you learned early in life that you 
better assume that hostility is around the corner because it usually is. And if you don't assume hostility is coming, even subconsciously, you won't put up enough defenses to fight against the incursion on your life or your fairness or other people getting in your way of what you need. And so I wonder if that is in her history because she seems quite fixated and convinced that Debbie is against her. We've seen two instances right here. We don't know, and maybe if Lydia could provide her case, maybe we'd be convinced or I'd be convinced. But she blamed Debbie for John, which doesn't seem to be possible, one, be also because John seemed quite uh, convinced of Larissa's nefariousness prior to this even this picnic, you know, when uh, Colt went over to John's house earlier in the season. John was certainly against Larissa and, and quite uh, harsh in his language. So I'm sure John came up with his hostility all on his own. And for Larissa, it's not, it's not John's fault. It's absolutely Debbie's fault. Debbie absolutely got in my way. Debbie gets up and she's just like, I don't know what's going on here, and closes the, the door. And we heard it. We heard the, the door. We don't know if they edited it, but it doesn't seem like Debbie would go like, wham. And then Larissa's like, oh, you know, you're slamming the door because her neurons are oriented that way is my speculation. I have no idea. Because she seems, Larissa seems quite convinced. That's the key, is that why would someone be so convinced of something that outsiders would say, why are you, why are you doing that? That doesn't, you're not making rational sense. For you out there, uh, I know a lot of you might identify as having borderline personality disorder. You've told me that, you've emailed me. So with borderline personality disorder, the early life experience is to experience abandonment, right? Or abuse, which feels like an abandonment, some sort of relational trauma that's very intense when you're very young, two, three, four, five years old. And that early life experience of abandonment, it's usually a theme, is wired into the brain of like, assume abandonment is coming because it usually does come. And it's better if I assume abandonment is always coming because then I'll be able to protect myself from the abandonment that happens at least 50% of the time. Those neurons get locked in, you become an adult, people are not really abandoning you, but you'll see abandonment anyway and you're 110% convinced that you're being abandoned, you're very hurt, and you will react against that. And so I wonder if she has a similar early life you know, complex trauma experience that results in what we're seeing right here. It's the best hypothesis I have based on extremely limited information. And as I always say, take everything I say with a grain of salt because if I actually met these people, I'm quite convinced my hypotheses would be much more robust, much more strong. I'd have much more data. I'd be able to ask them, does this seem accurate to you? With, for example, my borderline clients, I will ask them. I'll say, does this make sense to you? And they'll, they'll say yes or no. And then we'll further refine our conceptualization. It's a collaborative, mutual process that I do with people. And I don't have that opportunity with these people. So, but I think it is interesting, and maybe as we watch further, we'll either see data for it again. So let's let's continue watching. Down. Let me show you. Slam the door. Larissa. Let me show you. Slam the door. I'll show you. Larissa. That slam the door. Like you always does. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Put your hands in me. I call the pause. I'm done with you. Larissa, okay? calm down. I am so Larissa, done. So you're not you. the victim. Yeah. So it's uh, bothersome. If I was there with Debbie, I'd be like Debbie, Debbie, Debbie. <laughs> Yeah, this isn't going to help. <laughs> Let me validate you. It makes sense. It didn't seem like you slammed the door. Let's, let's not make it worse. It's great that she's going upstairs. I think that's fantastic. Getting in her face like that. And then, of course, Larissa comes back with, you touch me, I call the police, which is, you know, not a bad, you know, anytime there's physical violence, you should probably call the police. So it's not a bad thing to say. But, wow. Now I think I understand why you all asked me to watch this situation, because it's pretty... <laughs> It's pretty severe. Yes. Larissa, calm down, please. Larissa, you cannot talk to people like that. Okay, cause I'm wrong. What's stop. your DD? No, stop. You're not perfect. You're not an angel. I don't know what exactly is going through your mind. You think everyone's against you all the time. So it's interesting his approach. He's taking two different tactics right here. One is, is that he is trying to convince her 
you think everyone's against you and everyone's not. I don't know how well that's going to go over. That's probably just going to put him on the list of people that are against her. I don't know. The other thing is he's doing is getting kind of aggressive with her. Stop. Knock it off. You know, that, that kind of paternalistic talk, which I don't know if that's going to work. But, you know, it could. Given her personality, I wonder if she, – because she's looking for – she keeps talking about a man. I wonder if she's actually looking for that, which I don't recommend. Usually is just creating a monster. Uh, I, this just looks like a disaster. Uh, let's watch what happens. Now, Debbie's not perfect. Debbie has problems. John has problems. I have problems. You have problems. But you take offense. You threaten people. I'm going to call the police, use American laws against them. You don't know what that means. You don't even have a driver car. Okay, good. So take your f- ring, okay? Marry the woman that your mother like. It's not about my mother. And, okay, take the ring and f- you. Because, because I am the victim. Off her, You're not the and victim. And then you want to try to me like I, I, I am in the wrong. So I'm not going to lie. As a citizen, as a therapist, I don't have an opinion. I never do. But as a citizen watching this show, I think, okay, I don't think you guys had a thing anyway. <laughs> I, I, I see no evidence of closeness. I see a ton of incompatibilities. I see only escalation of what you're seeing right now. I can only imagine it getting worse. And Colt, there probably is a woman out there who would be much more compromising regarding your mom. You could have it all. And for Larissa, there's probably a dude out there who has the resources to shower you with gifts in the way you want, nothing wrong with that, who doesn't live with their mom. Both of you, there's a person out there. There's a lid for your pot. (laughs) I don't think you're the lid for each other's pot. But of course, I know if you're asking me to watch this, this must span at least two seasons. So this is uh, just very worrisome. Again, as a therapist, I don't have opinions. I've worked with couples that are worse than this, honestly. You know, imagine this couple 25 years from now. That's when they finally come into couples therapy sometimes. And imagine the resentments that will have built up by then. So I've helped clients that were further down the road than this. It takes a long time to unravel and to heal, but it's not as if this couple is doomed. But you just have to wonder if there's a better person for both of them out there. I don't know. Larissa, come back down here. Larissa, you're not the victim. I was really hurt when Larissa threw the rain on the floor. I put a lot of effort in proposing to her and giving her the rain. It felt like a punch in the gut. And I think it really puts more doubt in my decision to marry her. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, maybe I'm triggered by this whole thing and I'm just laughing at him now. I, I care about him. I care about Lady, Ladisa. I care about Debbie. I care about John. I care about everyone on the show. I really do. I'm not, I am not joking. I can see the good in everybody, and I really do. I don't just make it up. I actually see the good. I see the good in politicians that we all hate. <laughs> I can see, I can see the good. I really can. You know, I'm like Luke looking at Darth Vader and I see the good in you. And I really do. So I I see the good in him. But what he just said (laughs) was just, she says, I don't want to marry you and throws the ring at you. And now he's saying, you know, I'm not quite sure if I, uh, you know, I'm questioning our relationship. You think, you think you're questioning? (laughs) All right. Well, that does it for that episode. If you haven't subscribed below or upvoted or downvoted or neutral voted or commented or hit the bell or become a patron, if you haven't done those things and you want to, then please do do those things because it'd be great. And everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.